The latest donation to my Fly Jarrett to the Moon fundraise gives me the opportunity to discuss something that I've been meaning to address for a while now. Unfortunately, due to my university schedule and various distractions that shall remain nameless, this has been buried at the bottom of my to-do pile for a while now. In fact, I regret to say that because of the nameless drama of 2011, I totally forgot about it for some time. On July 9th, 2013, I received $10 US from Paul Castonge, who had this to say, I want to do my bit in getting you to the moon to inspect those landing sites. But even if you do get to go, you know they'll never let you fly over the sites. Maybe you should use the money to build a really good telescope. Maybe you could rent one. Excellent suggestion, Paul. This is actually similar to a suggestion that I received in 2011. A viewer wrote in to suggest that I contact the astronomers at the Very Large Telescope in Chile and ask how much it would be to rent out the observatory for the night and use their telescopes to search the moon for the artifacts, as Dr. Richard West had proposed doing in 2002. Now astronomers hope to kill off the conspiracy theory once and for all by using the Very Large Telescope, the VLT, by far the most powerful telescope in the world, to spot the Apollo lunar landers. Operated by European astronomers in the Chilean Andes, the VLT consists of four mirrors, 27 feet across, linked by optical fibers. It can see a single human hair at a distance of 10 miles. Trained on the moon, such astonishing resolution should enable it to see the base of one or more of the six lunar modules, which NASA insists landed on the moon between 1969 and 1972. Any images of the modules would be the first not to have been taken from space by NASA. Dr. Richard West, an astronomer at the VLT, confirmed that his team was aiming to achieve a high-resolution image of one of the Apollo landing sites. The first attempt to spot the spacecraft will be made using only one of the VLT's four telescope mirrors, which are fitted with special adaptive optics to cancel the distorting effects of the Earth's atmosphere. A trial run of the equipment this summer produced the sharpest image of the moon taken from the Earth, showing details 400 feet across from a distance of 238,000 miles. The VLT team hopes to improve on this, with the aim of detecting clear evidence for the presence of the landers. The base of the lunar modules measured about 10 feet across, but would cast a much longer shadow under ideal conditions. Dr. West said that the challenge pushed the optical abilities of one VLT mirror to its limits. If this attempt failed, the team planned to use the power of all four mirrors. They would most probably be sufficiently sharp to show something at the sites, he said. I sent the European Southern Observatory an email asking them for a price, explaining exactly what I intended to do with the telescope, and even sent them a link to the article covering West's lunar observation plans. To my surprise, I received the following reply. Hello, Jarrah. You have started quite an ambitious endeavour. To get time on the telescopes, there is a whole process involved. This time is not rented, but allotted following a proposal process, which includes feasibility studies. We really have never looked at the moon, since it is so close that it is not considered a good use of time. However, I spoke to a couple of the staff astronomers, and they suggested the following. 1. Check with Pic du Midi Observatory. They are the ones that originally mapped the site for lunar landings. 2. Then after getting the coordinates, check out the archived files at ESO. Best of luck, and maybe we will read about your discovery soon. Best regards, Sandy. I am astounded that in 2002, the scientists at ESO would publicly announce that they plan on using the Apollo landing sites to test the resolving capabilities of their telescopes, and then nine years later state that they have never looked at the moon because it is not considered a good use of time. And I hate to contradict Sandy here, but the VLT has been used to look at the moon. But to date, they have not released one showing the artifacts. As far as Pictou Midi Observatory goes, I didn't even bother with its archives because they are useless for our purposes. The largest optical telescope that the observatory has is the 2 meter wide Bernard Loit telescope. Doing the math indicates that this telescope has an angular resolution of only 0.06 arc seconds. Now, not counting the landing legs, the lunar module descent stage is 4 meters wide, and the moon is 380,000 kilometers away. To find the angular resolution we need to observe it, we divide those two numbers in meters, and then multiply them by the constant 206265. 
And so we see that to observe objects as small as the Apollo Lunar Module, what we need is a telescope with an angular resolution of at least 0.002 arcseconds. Well, in a press release, the European Southern Observatory announced that working in interferometric mode, the VLT had an angular resolution of 1 milli arcsecond. That is equal to 0.001 arcseconds. No wonder West was so keen to use it to try and resolve the artifacts. Interestingly, a year after I received this email, a certain member of the pro-NASA side wrote in claiming to have contacted ESO's Richard Hooke, and stated that the VLT can't resolve such objects on the moon. I do not know if this user is accurately quoting him or not, but on ESO's Frequently Asked Questions page, we find this statement. Using its adaptive optic system, the VLT has already taken one of the sharpest ever images of the lunar surface as seen from Earth. However, the smallest details visible in this image are still about 100 meters on the surface of the Moon, while the parts of the lunar module which are left on the Moon are less than 10 meters wide. A telescope 200 meters in diameter would be needed to show them. Although the VLT, when working as an interferometer, reaches the same equivalent resolution, it cannot be used to observe the Moon. But the Frequently Asked Questions page gives no explanation whatsoever as to why it can't be used, and instead immediately jumps to discussing the Hubble Telescope and LRO. In our discussion, the YouTube user then went on to claim that the VLT couldn't see the equipment because of the Moon's contrast, or because it was an interferometer. Well, I can't find anything about contrast anywhere on the site, not even in the Frequently Asked Questions page and resolution would be the same regardless of whether you were using one huge telescope or a series of smaller telescopes linked together with fiber optics. Incidentally, this frequently asked questions page contains an error. A 200 meter wide telescope would certainly resolve the artifacts, but it is not the minimum necessity. ESO is currently working on a 39.3 meter wide optical telescope called the Extremely Large Telescope. We are told that its angular resolution will be between 0.001 arcseconds to 0.65 arcseconds, depending on the instruments. The former end of this range is perfect to resolve the lunar module. Although doing the math shows that this telescope comes close to the required 2 milli arcsecond resolution, but falls just a tad short. Still, even at 3 milli arcseconds, it would be able to see something 5.4 meters wide. That would allow it to see the module and its shadow quite easily. The only advantage to using a 200 meter wide telescope is getting an even clearer picture. Further up on the frequently asked questions page, we find the following. The VLTI, operating with two 8.2 meter unit telescopes, reaches a spatial resolution equivalent to a single 130 meter giant telescope, which is about 2 milli arc seconds. This is equivalent to distinguishing two points separated by the size of a sesame seed on the International Space Station as seen from the ground. That's an interesting analogy. If you recall, back in 2006, they used a different way of describing milli arc second resolutions. With AMBER on the VLTI, the astronomers were able to see details on the scale of one milli arc second, corresponding to being able to distinguish, from the Earth, the headlights of a car on the Moon. Let's see, a sesame seed is about 2 millimeters wide, and the ISS is 380 kilometers away. So the ratio of a sesame seed to the ISS distance is the same as a car's headlights to the moon's distance. Yep, it's the same resolution. So why change the analogy? People are more familiar with the moon and cars than they are with the ISS and sesame seeds. In any case, if the VLT can see a sesame seed on the ISS, it can likewise see a car on the moon. For those keeping score, in 2002, Richard West of ESO opted for using the VLT to resolve the hardware on the lunar surface. In 2011, a Sandy from ESO tells me in personal communication that they never used it to look at the moon because it was not considered a good use of time. Then one year later, we are told that it can't be used to see the artifacts at all. Period. I will refrain from making any accusations, but if you are confused, so am I. Getting back to Paul's suggestion, I tried and failed to rent out the telescope. That just leaves building a telescope of my own. Unfortunately, that is not possible with the budget that I am trying to raise. The extremely large telescope costs 1.055 billion euros to build. At the time of my producing this video, that's nearly 1.4 billion US dollars, or 2800 times what I'm trying to raise. Even what Golden Spike is overcharging for a manned lunar landing mission is cheaper than that. 
I'm all in favour of building my own telescope, but for now, I'll stick to what I can afford. And so the total amount of funds raised is $484.56 US. Only $499,515.44 to go.